Okay, we're going to begin our exploration of the second part of mechanics. Remember, mechanics is made up of 2.1 and it goes through to 2.4. Kinematics was a really large chunk at the start of this topic, but now we've got that under our belt, we're going to be exploring forces and then some other really important concepts. You'll probably recall from the past that the units of force are newtons, named after Isaac Newton. When we name a unit of measurement after a person, we tend to use the capital for the shortening, so that's why it's a capital N for newtons there. Now, newtons are a derived unit, so one newton is equivalent to, in our SI units, one kilogram metre per second squared, and we'll explore why that is the case. It's a good idea when you're learning about units to have a nice sort of baseline feeling of you know what one of those units represents. So if we had an apple and we wanted to talk about the weight of that apple because weight is a force, an apple um, its weight is approximately equal to one newton. That's really good to know. Remember mass does not equal weight. They're two separate concepts which we'll talk about soon. So we could draw a force acting downwards of one Newton acting on that apple. There are three laws that Newton came up with, technically four, but we call them Newton's first, second, and third law. The fourth one has to do with gravitation, stay tuned. Let's begin with Newton's first law. It is, a body will remain at rest or moving with a constant velocity unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. A couple of things I wanna unpack here. It says a body will remain at rest, and it says, or moving with a constant velocity. Well, hopefully you recognize we've sort of repeated ourselves here. Remaining at rest just means a constant velocity of zero. Good. So it says, unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. We're gonna look at some unbalanced forces in a second. So that must mean a body will remain at rest or moving with a constant velocity if the forces are balanced. So it's sort of like we're writing the opposite of what I've put in blue here. So let's write that. Um, let's put a star. So that star we could also say, if the forces are balanced. So the first version was, a body will remain at rest or moving with constant velocity unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So that must mean a body will remain at rest or moving with a constant velocity if the forces are balanced, opposite of an unbalanced force. Okay, when we're talking about balanced or unbalanced forces, what we're really talking about is finding total forces on something. So total force. When we're finding the total force, we're um, summing forces. Summing just means adding. And once you've summed all your forces together, this means you find the net force. And net basically means overall. So the total force could also be written as the net force. It's important to know what net means there. Let's look at some forces. Okay. We've got a box here, and we're going to apply some forces to it. So I'm going to say, let's push it to the right with 15 newtons. That's our unit of force. Let's also apply another force that's, I don't know, that looks about half of 15, so we'll say 7 newtons. So what would be the net force acting on this? Well, let's make our sign convention to the right, because this is, you know, a vector vector has a magnitude and direction. So the net force would be 15 plus 7, so 22 newtons right. We could have also, instead of that 15 and that 7, we could have, instead of that 15 and that 7, drawn just a 22 newton force that would have the same impact upon that box. This is the net force. It's not another force we put on this. We're just saying when we added all those forces together, that was equivalent to 22 newtons to the right. 
let's now have 10 newtons acting in this direction and we'll have 20 oh let's try and draw that so it's actually relevant so let's make it 20 newtons i'm sorry if that's fallen off the screen acting in this direction so let's just say um when we do our net force we're going to have 20 newtons acting to the left and 10 newtons acting to the right if we continued to make to the right our um a positive our sign convention that would mean that the 10 newtons would be positive because it's pointing to the right and the 20 newtons would be negative because it's pointing to the left so that would tell us negative 10 newtons as our answer that doesn't mean a negative force that's just saying that that means 10 newtons to the left that negative is just indicating a direction that's all Okay, what do you think the net force would be in this situation here? Pause, have a think about it, write down your answer. Well, hopefully you recognise if you said upwards was positive, you've got positive 12 newtons. Take away 18 newtons because that's acting downwards. So you have negative 6 newtons. But remember, we're not going to write negative 6 newtons here. We're going to say, well, that represents 6 newtons downwards. So net force... is six newtons you could draw that or you could say six newtons downwards so what that means is if we removed these forces and replace that with just one vector that was six newtons downwards that would have the same effect on this box okay i hope everything's in frame now so for the net force remember we were adding together our forces keeping in mind the sign convention Let's look at another example. Okay, looking at this box now, we have 30 newtons and 10 newtons both acting to the right, and we have 40 newtons acting to the left. So if we make to the right our sign convention, when we do the net force, I can't be bothered writing net force each time. We've written that a few times. So rather than that, we can actually represent it with a shorthand mathematical kind of way. This letter that I'm about to draw here is a fancy letter. It's the Greek letter sigma, it's capital. And what sigma means is the sum of. And that's what we're doing here. We're summing together our forces, keeping in mind our sign convention. So rather than writing net force every time, we could write, I like to write my sigma just a bit less fancily when I'm doing it as part of my working out. So we're going to say that as our net force from now on. Net force equals, well, we have... 30 plus 10 positive because it's to the right minus we've got 40 acting to the left in this example our net force was equal to zero when all of these forces were added together and we got zero it's like the forces cancelled out we had 40 newtons to the right 40 newtons to the left so let's write a really important statement here This has a special name. That means the object is in. What word could we use for this? The forces were equal in both directions. Let's use equilibrium. You probably thought I was spelling equal wrong for a second there. So equilibrium, that's their way of saying that the net force equals zero. Sorry, that was off the screen. Let's go back for a second. We said a body will remain at rest or moving with a constant velocity if the forces are balanced. If the forces are balanced, well, that means the net force has to equal zero. So the way I like to remember Newton's first law is if the net force is equal to zero, that means the acceleration is also equal to zero because a constant velocity that must mean acceleration equals zero acceleration tells us how the velocity is changing so if all of the forces are balanced on something the acceleration equals zero so that means um, the velocity is constant so hopefully you can see with what we've just done with our examples how we've sort of summed that up here really nice 
Let's have some forces acting in some different directions. 10 newtons acting in this direction. We'll have um, 5 newtons and 5 newtons. So you're probably thinking, oh, I understand. 10 newtons to the right, 10 newtons to the left. This object is in equilibrium. What are we going to do, though, if we had some forces acting in a vertical plane? So let's now have like 20 newtons acting this way. And let's make it 50 newtons acting this way. You're probably thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? Well, it's okay. We're just going to break this up into horizontal and vertical bits. So we can do some of the forces equals um, in the horizontal direction. So let's write horizontal. Does this kind of remember uh, remind you when we were doing our projectile motion, we broke stuff into horizontal and vertical? So some of the forces equals. We need to put our sign convention. So let's say upwards and to the right is positive. Awesome. So we're just looking at the horizontal forces. Can you identify them? We've got our 5 newtons, our 5 newtons, and our 10 newtons. So we're going to have 10 newtons to the right is positive, minus 10 newtons to the left is negative. Horizontally, the sum of the forces equals zero. So you might be thinking, ah, oh, this object is in equilibrium. But alas, we also need to think about vertically now. So let's write a little heading of vert. So sum of the forces equals. What's going to happen here? So we have 20 newtons acting up, which will be positive, 50 newtons acting down, which will be negative. So 20 minus 50 equals negative 30 newtons. I guess I should put newtons on this zero here too. I don't know, that's a, that's a topic for debate in the science community. Um, and what that means is 30 newtons down or downwards. Is this object in equilibrium? Well, no. Horizontally, the force is balanced, but vertically, the forces didn't balance. We had 50 newtons acting downwards. So all we've done here is really review some of the stuff that we did in our projectile motion. We broke this up into horizontal and vertical components. We looked at our sign convention, and we just, you know, did the relevant maths. So to be clear, in this example here, we had a net force, or we could have written some of the forces, um, which was 30 newtons downwards, or just down. Okay, in this example here, let's put in our sign convention again. Always need that when we're using vectors. Now let's, rather than writing out all the working out for this one, just sort of talk us through it. So we've got, if we're looking horizontally in red, We've got 10 newtons acting to the left, 14 newtons acting to the right. That 14 newtons would be positive. So 14 minus 10 would give us an overall force in the horizontal direction of four newtons to the left. Notice we don't write any signs on these. We wouldn't write negative 10 newtons because the sign is indicated by the direction of the arrow. So four newtons. Then we've got 10 newtons up, seven newtons down, so that would be three newtons up. Well, what would be the net force in this circumstance? The net force is the total overall force. Hopefully you can see we're going to take, and I'm drawing it bigger just so it's clear, four newtons in this direction. And we need to add that to three newtons in this direction. So that means our net force here is this arrow. Really important. Oh, why won't it do it? There we go. That's our net force. Remember, net just means the sum of total. And when we're summing together two vectors like this, we need to use Pythagoras. So the net force in this example is going to be that blue arrow pointing, and it's going to be 5 newtons. I chose those numbers on purpose. You would do 3 squared plus 4 squared and take the square root. So this um, shape here, instead of applying that 10 newtons and our, oh, come on, our 10 newtons, 7 newtons, 14 and 10, we could have just applied one force, I'm going to draw it just from the center here, one force acting in this direction in 5 newtons, and that would have the same effect as this one. 
For our future examples, what we're going to do instead of drawing the forces like that, we're going to draw them coming from a dot in the middle. That's what I've done in this last example here. So far, we've had everything exactly horizontally or vertically. But what if you came upon this situation? So like I said, we're going to be drawing our forces coming from a dot in the middle of the square. Because then you're not really worried, oh, where exactly along the edge of the square am I doing this? So I'll just do it from this dot. What if I had something like this, 20 newtons coming off in this direction? Now I'm going to say this angle here is 30 degrees. And we had, I don't know, um, let's make it also 20 newtons. Oh, I don't want to confuse you. Let's make it 25 newtons acting downwards. What do you think we'd do now? Hopefully you can see that like when we were breaking up vectors in our projectile motion topic, we could break up this 20 newton vector. We could break it up into a component that's in this direction. And some people like to draw components as dotted lines. So we'll do that too. So we could have a component of the vector in this direction and a component of the vector in this direction. That would be the equivalent of that 20 newton vector. That angle we said was 30 degrees. So because this is the opposite side, this would be 20 sine 30. And sine of 30 is a half. That would be 10 newtons, which we'll write in later. And this one here being the adjacent side would be 20 cos 30. Hopefully you remember cos 30 is root 3 over 2. So let's do our horizontal and our vertical. Remember that 20 newtons, we've broken it up now into our horizontal and vertical. So you might like to almost cross out that 20 newtons very, very finely so you can still see it. But just as a visual reminder that you're not using that number in your calculations, you're only going to use the horizontal and the vertical parts. Horizontally, do we have any forces acting? We do. We have this force here, which we said was 20 cos 30. So the sum of the forces in the horizontal direction equals 20 cos 30. Let's get our calculator. 20 cos are we in degrees? 30. And let's do that to, um, let's do it to three sig figs just because I want to. 17.3. And the units, newtons. We didn't do our sign convention. That was naughty. There we go. So vertically, we've got this 25 newtons acting downwards. And we've got this 20 sine 30 acting upwards. So that 25 newtons would be downwards. And negative, so negative 25 plus 20 sine 30. So negative 25 plus 20 sine 30, sine 30 is a half, so plus 10, would be negative 15, so that would mean 15 newtons downwards. If you wanted to find the net force, the net force is found by putting together both of these forces here. So if we had 17.3 newtons acting to the right, and we had 15 newtons acting downwards, we could pick up that second force here, our 15 newtons, and move that across to form a right angled triangle because horizontal and vertical things have got to be at right angles. So the net force, when we put back together our vertical and horizontal, would be this value here. So to three sig figs, that'd be 22.9 newtons. Acting at that um, thing there, you could find this angle, but we've practiced that before and I'm going to say, I'm gonna leave that for you to have a look at. Okay, we now have an object in equilibrium. 
and we want to find the missing force here. So you're going to be thinking, I need to break this up into vertical and horizontal. So even if you're not sure where to start, let's do that first. Let's look at this 50 newtons here. That can be broken up to um, a horizontal force going out to here and a vertical force going out to here. Don't forget to include your arrows. I am going to tell you that this angle here is 45 and it's the same angle over the other side. So let's also break up that vector. That means opposite side here, this is going to be our hypotenuse is 50. It's the opposite side, so it's sine 45 degrees. And this side down here, the adjacent side, is going to be 50 cos 45. Similar over the other side, the opposite side has an hypotenuse of 50. So it's going to be 50 sine 45. And this one will be 50 cos 45. We don't know F at the moment. Do we need to break F up into a horizontal and a vertical component? Well, no, it's already perfectly vertical. So we're going to be using a different strategy here. We're told the object is in equilibrium. If an object is in equilibrium, that means the sum of the forces equals zero. So when we look vertically and horizontally here, we already know the forces must balance and that will help us find the unknown force. So let's look horizontally first. And let's put in our sign convention. Very nice. So horizontally, what forces do we have acting? Like I said, we could almost neatly but gently cross out these 50 newtons here because we've broken them up into their component vectors. So horizontally, we have 50 cos 45 acting to the left, which will be negative, and 50 cos 45 acting to the right, which will be positive. So some of the forces, we're expecting it to equal zero because the object is in equilibrium. Let's check that it actually does. So we said negative 50 cos 45. I'm going to put underneath plus 50 cos 45. So yep, that equals zero. Didn't help us solve this F problem though. Sometimes it, it could if we had an unknown angle, um, like if we didn't know this 50, but we did know this F. Still is helpful to look at the horizontal sometimes. So let's look vertically now. What forces do we have acting vertically? Well, we have two lots of that 50 sine 45 acting upwards. And we have that F acting downwards. And because the object's in equilibrium, we're able to say, yep, some of the forces has to equal zero here. So that zero, let's put it over here. It's like we've flipped this around. We put the zero here and we'll find out what the sum of the forces is here. So we said we had two lots of that 50 sine 45 acting upwards, which is positive, and we have F acting downwards. So if we add F over to the other side, F equals 100 sine 45. So if we did that just to one sig fig here, that would be a force of 70 newtons. So this is a little different to what we've done previously. But a more helpful thing, we knew that this was in equilibrium and that meant that some of the forces had to equal zero. And that meant we could then find out what the force was here. Now you might be saying, why didn't we go straight to this step here? We knew that the upwards forces had to balance the downwards forces. There will be times in future where some of the forces doesn't necessarily equal zero. So I really encourage you to do this step here and then this step because in my experience, it seems to help a lot.